Good afternoon friends and welcome to the next short video in the Ahar Gana series. In this video, I am going to examine the phenomena of retrograde movement of planets. In Sanskrit, that is known as Vakragati. Now, what is Vakragati? You have seen in all the animations so far that here is the ecliptic and the sun and the moon are moving in a clockwise direction along the ecliptic and the other planets also. In fact, the, the way the degrees are numbered in increasing order in the clockwise direction, this is because all the planets are moving in a clockwise direction. So 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, 120, 150, 180, that is the direction in which the planets are moving. But there are some periods in time when some of the planets move in an anti-clockwise direction. So they are going kind of backwards. And those periods of time are known as retrograde movement or Vakragati. Now, let me illustrate that using Buddha as an example. Buddha and Shukra are known as inferior planets. They are between the earth and the sun. This is high school astronomy. To illustrate Vakragati, I don't need the entire ecliptic right now. So, I am going to zoom in so that you can see Buddha very clearly. So, there is Buddha. Now, I am going to start the animation and you see what happens. So, you can see an orange colored line which is the trace of Buddha's path and it is moving in a forward direction along with the sun and shukra. So, from 220 deg 210 degrees, it is now moved to 240 degrees. It is moving forward towards 270 degrees. This is normal forward motion. But now you see, it starts slowing down. And before reaching 300 degrees, it kind of comes to a halt and it has reversed direction. This is Vakragati. This is the retrograde movement of Buddha. And now it changed direction again and it's come back to the normal forward motion once again. So this pattern keeps repeating again and again and again. So it's moving forward again. It's coming close to Saturn. It's overtaking Saturn. Still moving forward. It's approaching the zero degree point. Approaching Guru, still moving forward, going towards 30 degrees. But now, it slows down, practically comes to a halt and reverses direction, Vakragati again. But in fact, when it's reverse direction in Vakragati, you see it looks bigger also. Because that's point in time, it's closer to the earth. And hence, it looks bigger to us if we observe it from the surface of the earth. And now it's again changed direction and back to forward movement. So, this is the pattern which keeps repeating again and again and again. I am not going to show it anymore, the same pattern, but I am going to repeat this animation with one addition, which will give you a lot of insight into why this happens. The addition which I am making is a, a loop which you see here, a white colored loop. Now, what does that loop indicate? Once again, I'm going to zoom in and you will understand what that loop indicates. So, this loop is clearly telling you what we all know, what we all learnt in high school, that Buddha is not orbiting the earth, Buddha is orbiting the sun. Buddha is going around Surya in this orbit. But Surya in turn is orbiting the earth in the geocentric model. So, this is loops within loops. So, Surya is orbiting Earth, Buddha is orbiting Surya. Now, this kind of double orbit is known as epicyclic movement in English. So, what is the effect of this? It, this is actually the same animation as the previous, but with an addition of this white loop. So, I am going to run the animation. Take a look. So, Buddha is moving forward. 
and that is the orbit it's going to follow that white line so it's now catching up with the sun it's overtaking the sun the plane of orbit is also twisting around a little bit now when it comes to this part of the orbit it is going to change direction and you can see why right because it is tethered to the sun it has to go around and round the sun now this is vakragati but vakragati appears to move faster because surya and buddha are moving in opposite directions so their relative movement is much faster now again at this end of the orbit it has to change direction now it's back in the forward movement this is why vakragati happens because of this epicyclic nature of the orbit so let's go through the second cycle also it's crossed saturn it's moving forward it's approaching jupiter but when it approaches this point it's going to slow down and it turns back there this is vakragati again and vakragati appears to end much quicker because these two are moving in opposite directions so the relative movement is much faster and when it comes to this corner of this loop it's back to the normal movement so now you understand why the vakragati actually happens in fact what this is illustrating is a planet like buddha is tethered to the sun it moves around the sun so it will only go this much of on each side of the sun it can never go like the moon for example into opposition with the sun 180 degrees away from the sun impossible it's tethered and this is its loop it keeps going like this in fact this is why if you want to observe buddha sometimes you can observe it only in the early mornings when it rises just before the sun rises sometimes you can observe it only in the late evening when it sets after the sun sets so it's either a morning star or an evening star in this side it may be a morning star this side it could be the evening star and the same applies to shukra also but it has a bigger orbit i will show you a little bit of that in a moment in a few minutes from now so this is what is happening this is why vakragati is taking place i will give you one more final look at uh, buddha's vakragati but keeping the entire ecliptic in the view with a trace on take a look this is what it's doing this is the trace now it's in forward movement and there is vakragati it looped back now it again comes back into forward movement and here is the next vakragati then again it's in forward movement and somewhere here the next vakragati happens and again forward movement and this keeps repeating again and again and again that's one more vakragati there and there i stopped this animation so this is the retrograde movement of buddha now i'm going to repeat the animation but this time highlighting shukra in fact before i start the animation with shukra i will show you you know that shukra also goes around the sun so this is the orbit of shukra around the sun it's much bigger than the orbit of buddha around the sun because shukra is farther away from the sun than buddha in comparison here is buddha you can see the orbit is much smaller so with shukra i am not going to show you this orbital movement but the overall vakragati how it look like i will illustrate so once again i am going to run the animation i am running it much faster this time it's still in forward motion still in forward motion and here it goes into vakragati you can see it really really looks huge when it goes into 
retrograde movement because it comes that much close to the earth in retrograde. Once again, somewhere here, not yet, not yet, ah, there, it's becoming bigger and bigger and it stops and it loops back. Vakragati. Then again in forward motion and it moves forward and forward and forward. And here comes the next Vakragati, reverse retrograde movement. And every, every time it goes into the retrograde movement, it comes closer to the earth and it appears bigger. So that brings me to the end of this short video. I hope you have now a better understanding of why planets move backwards. A similar thing happens with the superior planets also, like Jupiter, Saturn, Mars, which are farther away from us. I mean, they are not between the Earth and the Sun. So they are called the superior planets. They also do something like this, but it's harder for me to illustrate. But the principle is the same. Because of loops within loops, because of epicyclic motion, all those planets are orbiting the Sun. And the Sun is orbiting the Earth in a geocentric model. And that's why standing on the surface of the Earth, we observe some of the planets move backwards at certain points in time for certain periods. So that brings me to the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching.